Lord in song and worship him. Amen. I'm ready for that Beulah land. Hallelujah. Any day, any time, it can happen. Praise the Lord for Jesus. Amen. It is the sweetest name I know. Hallelujah. Let's look and see what the Lord has. The AM message will happen next Sunday probably because the Holy Ghost preached this morning. That's the best way to do it. <laughs> Amen. You know, you and I are children of God, and we've been chosen, we've been called, and and uh, predestined. But the thing about that is, God will not go against a man's will. It is a man's will whether he goes to heaven or hell. Did you know that? Man is a, a free agent to choose the direction that he wants to go. Bottom line. The bottom line right there, think about it. God loves us so much, but he gives us that free choice. Free choice. Amen. Let's just look and see uh, what the Lord has on the, 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 the word. Turn it on. There we go. Appreciate Ronnie. He's been back there working on that thing. We had a man come over from Tremont, I believe. And helped us a little bit back there and get our streaming going a little bit because uh, we've been preaching and been, hadn't, hadn't been hearing no, no volume on the voice. But I think they maybe got that repaired, I think, hopefully. Let's look at this. You know, we've been chosen. Did you know that? You know, God chose all of his creation in humanity, God did, uh, to be in his will and his plan. Did you know that? But he gave us a free choice, didn't he? He gave us a free choice. So let's just look a little bit and see. Your will is a final choice. It's left up to the individual, not to God. Y'all hear that? It's left up to the individual, not God, of the direction that we go. Free choice. We have a free choice there. All are called to accept God's plan of salvation. Did you know that? All are called to accept the salvation of our Lord Jesus Christ. Think about that, y'all. Who meet the conditions will be blessed. All are free to accept or reject that call. Did you know that? And we've got people out there today that reject the Lord Jesus Christ. They don't want to hear nothing about it. And uh, it's just, you see it all over outside these walls. You'll see it everywhere. Uh, the people of the world is going down that broad, destructive road. And God said broad was a road that leads to destruction. But praise God for Jesus and the straight and narrow road. And when we make that choice of to follow Jesus, it is a straight and narrow road. But the Lord will help us follow that road. Amen. And everything he does to us to direct us and show us as we obey his commandments uh, is to draw closer to him. Amen. And have that personal relationship with him. So let's look at the scriptures here uh, tonight in Ephesians 1, 3, 7. Chosen. Look at here. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. I tell you right now, the, the greatest gift of mankind is what? Christmas, we celebrate the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. The greatest gift of mankind. We're blessed of Abraham. Why? Abraham's linkage, uh, which is the Jewish nation, come through King David. And King David, the linkage came through to Jesus Christ our Lord, who was a Jew, born in the Jewish uh, 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 linkage. Think about that. Let's look right here and see right there. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Praise God for his son. You know, praise God for his son, Jesus. You know, we can cry out to the Lord, our Redeemer, 
and cry out to him and we can confess our sins, hallelujah, we can repent and God will change our lives radically. Amen? Think about it. According, according as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. You know, God's plan before uh, he gave it over to Lucifer and he gave it over to, to, to Adam and they both failed, but he gave it over to Jesus, the son. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God. He was already there in the foundations of the world. Praise God. He came as a man God to this earth of his creation uh, and deity walked upon this earth in the flesh. Amen. In the flesh he came. Hallelujah. Emmanuel, the Bible says, God with us. Thank you, Lord Jesus. But he chose us for his plan. Did you know that? Did you know his uh, ultimate plan at first was he created humanity and we were supposed to, we would be no, no sin and we would never die and we would just live the life that he had prepared for us. Uh, but Adam, uh, he gave Adam that free choice and will and Adam uh, uh, turned against God and disobeyed God. And because of that uh, disobeyment through Adam, the whole humanity uh, 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 creation has been cursed on account of it. But praise God, Jesus came and to reverse all of that. Amen. So we have a choice. We can be with the Lord or not be with the Lord. Hallelujah. And be with the Lord for eternity or not. But God has a plan. And one day his plan that he did at first is going to be accomplished. Amen. Because he's coming back. And he's going to get rid of all rebellion upon this earth. It's going to be gone. Think about it. Look here. According to he has chosen us chosen us in him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Where well, we're holy and we're without blame before him in love, if you have Jesus Christ in your heart, you know, we wasn't righteous, but because of Jesus, we're right standing before God. Did you know that? We've been washed in the blood. We've been redeemed by the blood of the lamb. Hallelujah. Think about it. Let's look right here at this other uh, scripture here. It says, uh, having predestined us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasures of his will. Now, he chose us for his plan. Amen. That's what he wanted. But he gave us a free choice to make the decision and do what uh, uh, direction that we wanted to go. And so is our choice uh, in that uh, matter. So you see that, and you see what's happening to the world out there now. They're all choosing. They, they're calling evil good and, and good evil, just like Isaiah the prophet said that would happen. They're doing it now, and they think they're right in it. Just like our brother Paul, he thought it was right to go crucify the Christian. Did you know that? He was uh, of the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the Sanhedrins and all of that clan, and he thought it was right to go out there and persecute the Christians and kill them, and he held the garments of Stephen while they stoned him. But praise God, on the Damascus Road, our brother Paul seen the Lord Jesus Christ, and Christ asked him, why are you persecuting me? Think about it. And it radically changed him, didn't it? I want you to look at old Paul. You know, he was in shipwreck. He was beaten five times, 39 lashes. Uh, he was uh, stoned to death. He was uh, snake bitten. He was in prison. Man, he went through, he was in the deep for two or three nights. He went through some suffering you and I can't even imagine. But he did that because he loved the Lord thy God, you know. It's like God, he, uh, you know, when you're a Christian and it's like God forgives uh, seems to be a certain of us uh, more than others uh, is worse. Or, and they dedicated more to God. Think about it. We're dedicated to God. We're here tonight because we love the Lord. But our brother Paul he is a fine example of suffering, isn't he? <laughs> I got one right over here, honey. Thank you. I think I'll have a little bit of nook. That's Vietnamese for water. Buku nook. That means a lot. Thank you for water. And thank God for air. How, how, I mean, like that. <laughs> Praise God. 
Let's look a little further right here. Having predestined us unto the adoption of the children by Jesus Christ. We're adopted because of our Lord Jesus Christ, amen, and we said yes to the Lord, and we believe that Jesus died on the cross. We believe he came as a babe uh, by a virgin, and we believe that he uh, was raised up and he died on the cross. They, they crucified him. They buried him, and we believe that on the third day, just like prophesied thousands of years before, that he came out of the tomb, and he sits at the right hand of the Father, and we believe that. That's our faith. Uh, praise God. That's our belief tonight as our Lord Jesus Christ, what he has done for you and I. Amen. Let's look right here at this other verse. To the praise of the glory of his grace wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved. We're accepted. You know why? Who is Jesus Christ? He is our atonement between God and man. Did you know that? We're at one between God and man because of Jesus Christ. When you believe in Jesus Christ, uh, you got to believe in Jesus Christ. So Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, the life. No man will come to the Father but by me. Amen. You won't come to the Father unless you recognize his son and what his son has done. His son is the only one that can forgive sins. Did you know that? He's the only one with the innocent blood. Hallelujah. Praise God. It wasn't tainted by Adamite blood. Praise God for that. He shed it for you and I. Innocent blood, in whom we have redemption through his blood. Right there it is. Amen. Look here. In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. Hallelujah. We've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Amen. Because we said, yes, Lord, we believe in. We, when we come to the altar, what did we do? We said, we cried out to the Lord, Lord, forgive me. I repent, God, because we were convicted by the Holy Ghost. Lord, forgive me because I've sinned against you. Amen? Think about it. Think about it. I've sinned. Is that, did we get that straightened out? Yes, we did. When we said yes to the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. Redemption through his blood. Praise God for his blood. Amen. Covers a multitude of sin, doesn't it? Thank you, Lord Jesus. Let's go to this next verse in Romans and look and talk about uh, the love of God in Jesus Christ. Amen. The love of God in Jesus Christ. Look at right here. And we know that all things work together for the good to them that love God. To them who are called according to his purpose. You see that? We've been called according to his purpose. Amen. And a lot of people's called, but they don't, they don't go, do they? But man, when you get that power of God on you, it starts drawing you to the cross. It's an awesome thing when you finally surrender and submit, isn't it? It's a wonderful thing when you say, yes, Lord. Think about it. The Bible says, for whom he did foreknow, he also did predestine to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Praise God for Jesus Moreover, whom he did predestine, whom he also called, and whom he called them, he also justified, whom he justified them, he also glorified. We've been justified by the blood of Jesus. Think about it. What shall we say then to these saints? If God be for us, who can be against us? Have you ever thought about that? When the enemy comes at you and all the stuff is going on in your life, if God's for us, who can be against us? Amen. Because God is awesome God and he loves us. And he gave his only begotten son for you and I. He, he gave the ultimate prize, didn't he? God did. Gave his only begotten son who died on the cross for you and I, all the way to death on the cross. You know, Abraham had to sacrifice Isaac, and Abraham was going to sacrifice Isaac, and God was testing Abraham. And Abraham raised a knife up. He was going to do it. And the Lord sent an angel and said, the, the, the sacrifice is entangled in a bush over here. But you know, Abraham, you know, it broke his heart because that's his only child. And he was going to be the father of many, many, like the sands of the sea. Now think about it. But Abraham had so much faith that he believed if he killed Isaac, God raised him back up. 
he had that kind of faith. You know, we had our brothers and sisters uh, in uh, the Holy Word, our generals back here. You can get in the book of faith in Hebrews 11, and you'll see that. But I'm here to tell you right now, we got some real generals in here that's done some awesome things that you and I can't even imagine. But they said yes to the Lord. They said yes to the Lord. Amen. And they went forward the way God told them to do. And we have to say yes, too. Think about it. And we've got a lot of our generals that's uh, gone to be with the Lord, and they're missed. And I pray, I pray God will raise up more generals uh, that's on fire for the Lord to do the work that God's called them to do and uh, go forth until he comes back. I believe he's fixing to come, don't you? I believe he's fixing to come. Who shall say, who shall say these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? God is for us. He that spares not his own son and delivered him up before us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? He gave his only begotten son, so how much more you think God won't give you everything that you need? He said he'd supply our needs, didn't he? Think about it. You know, I, I asked a question in here this morning. I said, is anybody in here that uh, has uh, a prayer answered this week? And there was a number of hands went up. Amen? Think about that. We, we, can, we serve a risen Savior. We can get in that prayer closet with the Lord and pray to him, and you'll see things happen and, and answer prayer because we serve a risen Savior who is alive. Amen? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again. Who is even at the right hand of the Father who make an intercession for you and I? We serve a risen Savior. He is alive. You know, I like to, 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 to talk about God's Word. It said that he was seen by over 500 of the brethren after he come out of the grave. Did you all know that? He was seen by over 500 of the brethren after he come out of the grave. Think about that. He's alive, and he sits at the right hand of the Father, and he's interceding for you and I. You know, sometimes I get to pray, and I don't know what to pray for. What do I do? I say, Lord, will you intercede for me? Hallelujah. In my prayer closet, I tell you right now, I pray a lot in tongues because the Holy Ghost knows more uh, about what I need to pray for than I do. And sometimes I feel like I need to ask Jesus to intercede for me on certain situations I'm in. Anybody know what I mean? You're a Christian. You can do that. Hallelujah. Who shall separate from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, uh, or pearl, or sword? You know, some people get in tribulation and stuff, and they walk away from God, don't they? Well, when they walk away from God, they're going to be in a worse condition than they are because they walk away from the one that can help them. Look right here. Separation. Look at here. Who shall separate from the love of Christ? No one. The Bible says he'll never forsake us or he'll never leave us in Hebrews 13, 5. The Bible says that. I believe what the Bible says, don't you? He'll never forsake us. He'll never leave us. That's who he is. I'll tell you right now, he loves us that much. And the Bible says it is written for, for they sake we are killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. You know, the world hates us, and the world's hating us more and more. Do you know that? I want to tell you right now, you say, we got it made as Christians right here in America right now because that persecution is coming faster than I can imagine. But in other parts of the world, Christians are literally being killed, tortured, and destroyed. Churches burned down. It's happening right now in the world, just like the Bible said it would happen. Why? Because they hate Christians. They don't mind all the other religions, but don't speak the name of Jesus. That's what the Pharisees and Sadducees said. Go out and preach, told our disciples. Go out and preach, do what you want to do, but don't mention that name, Jesus. But he said, how are you going to not mention Jesus? He's our Lord. Hallelujah. He's the power and authority that we do what we do. Amen. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor uh, principalities or powers nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other uh, creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. 
Is that agape love like we've never seen before? Have you arrived yet in that agape love? I hadn't. Sometimes I have to ask the Lord Jesus Christ, give me the love of Jesus. Sometimes I get a little bitter, angry, and, and fleshly, and I have to ask God to give me the love of Jesus to get my direction back where I needed to go. We're still in the flesh, ain't we? We are still in the flesh, and we haven't arrived yet. He said those who endure to the end. So we've got to fight a good fight like old Paul. I tell you, old Paul, he fought a good fight. But he said to, 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 lead, to be here is Christ, but to go is gain for him. And he was a Roman citizen, and when they took him to the gallows, after about two years he was in Rome, and he wrote the epistles and all of that stuff, you know, they cut his head off. Man, he played the ultimate prize, didn't he? But he's shouting in glory right now. We're going to get to see him. I want a fellowship with him, don't you? Wouldn't that be awesome? In Acts 15, 7, 9, it talks about Gentiles and Jesus, our Jesus. You know, Cornelius had a dream about old Peter, and old Peter had a dream. And so the Holy Ghost put Peter and Cornelius together. Cornelius was a Gentile. Peter was a Jew, and they thought at first uh, Jesus told his disciples to go out to the Jew first. He did. But what happened to the Jews? They rejected the coming of the Lord. But our Lord Jesus, our God Almighty, had another plan, didn't he? He said, well, the Gentiles are going to get the same thing you get. So Peter went to Cornelius and they prayed. And, and uh, he told all of them, said, you know, the, the Gentiles are going to get baptized in the Holy Ghost and saved by the blood of Jesus. It's like we are. Amen. And we're the Gentiles, y'all. And let me tell you what's fixing to happen to the Gentiles. We're fixing to be raptured out of here. And when we're raptured out of here, guess who's going to take on the, the sharing in, of the gospel? The Jews are finally going to recognize the one with the scars in his hands. They're going to ask him, say, where'd you get them scars in your hands? He said, from my friends. Woo, that's awesome, isn't it? Our, us Gentiles is about done our work. It's about time for us to get out of here. I'm ready. Amen. Get on with the program. Look at here. And when they had been much disputing, Peter rose up. They were disputing about that. They, they can't have it. You know, Jews, is, it's a, a, only for the Jews. And Peter, he stood up and said unto them, Men and brethren, you know that a good while ago God made choice among us. God made a choice, didn't he? And I want to tell you this. We have a choice, too, to serve him or not. Look at here. That the Gentiles, by my mouth, should hear the word of the gospel and believe. Now, it took a lot for Peter to stand up to the Jewish people in that where he was a minister and, and tell them, God spoke to me and told me what to do. The Gentiles is going to get the same stuff we got. His name is Jesus, the good news. The good news, look right here. Gentiles, by my mouth, should hear the word of the gospel, and believe. And guess what? The Gentiles believe. We're here today, ain't we? Praise God for that. And God, which knoweth the hearts, bear them witness, giving them the Holy Ghost, even as he did unto us. Y'all see that? Peter told them, said, God knows the Gentiles' heart, and when I preach the good news, the gospel to the Gentiles, God knew their heart, and they received the Holy Ghost just like we do. They've been forgiven just like we are. And you know, most of the Jews, even until this day, is in the old law. But the Messianic Jews recognize Jesus Christ. But I'm here to tell you right now, they still, a lot of Jews that don't recognize that Jesus come coming, they're going to hell because they're not saved. We in the new covenant, what do we do the Lord suffer for? said, this is my blood of the New Testament. They got to recognize that Jesus came, died on a cross, and was raised and sat at the right hand of the Father. Some of them are still looking for him. Well, he's done come. And he's coming back again. Amen. He come as a lamb and was persecuted. But he's coming back as a lion. The lion of Judah, by the way. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. And put off no difference between us and them purifying their hearts by faith. So you and I are blessed this night because, praise God, 
our Lord didn't hold back the gospel for the Gentiles too. Amen. And you and I are blessed tonight. We've been chosen, everybody. God wants everybody to be saved. Did you know that? But he gave everybody a choice. It's your choice, our choice, to accept the Lord Jesus Christ and what he did for you and I. Died on the cross, buried and raised on the third day, and he sits at the right hand of the Father. Amen. He is alive. Our Redeemer is alive. He is risen, and he's coming back. Hallelujah. And we have that choice and plan that we're in his plan. Amen. Think about it again. Your will, final choice is left up to the individual, not to God. And we're a call to accept God's plan of salvation. And that's where your faith is. Amen. When you become a believer and accept the God's plan of salvation, you're in his plan. Hallelujah. Praise God. We are in his plan tonight. And we give him the praise. We give him the praise. Amen. I'm going to ask everybody, will you bow your head, please? Lord, thank you for your son, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that uh, you called us, God, and we made the right decision to believe that your son died on the cross, was buried, and on the third day he rose again. And we thank you for that, God. We thank you for your son, Jesus. We thank you for that redemptive blood. We thank you that he has risen again and he is alive and he is coming back, oh God. And we thank you for that, God. And we give you praise for that, oh God. We magnify and glorify you, God. It's an honor, God. And God, we just want to praise you tonight. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. We love you. We praise you. Thank you for the good news that we can share with our neighbors and even people all over the world. We thank you for that good news, God, and it's their free choice to accept. I pray you'll convict the sinners like never before, God, and let them be drawn to the cross, oh God. In Jesus' name, Lord. In Jesus' name. Everybody said amen and amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Anybody sick in your body and you want to be prayed for, we'll certainly anoint you. These altars are open. We will pray and lay hands on you the way the Bible says to do. Call the elders of the church and anoint with oil and pray anywhere. Praise God. I, I'm going to dismiss you to go raid your refrigerators. If you got something in it. <laughs> God bless you. Thank you for being here tonight. It's a good to be in the house of God. I'm excited about what the Lord's doing. Amen. And remember, uh, 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 Bible teaching on Tuesday night. We have prayer meeting uh, also on Wednesday night and prayer meeting on Saturday night. Brother B.R., uh, prayer meeting, having power.